Welcome to Frigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 82 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about what are application pools, creating application pools, application pool identities, associating an ASP.NET web application with an application pool. First, we'll look at how to associate an application with an application pool and then we'll discuss about application pools. Now here, I have a very simple ASP.NET web application project. On this web form 1, I have some static text. Now if I run this by pressing Ctrl F5, by default, Visual Studio uses the built-in IIS. Visual Studio has got built-in IIS that is being used to actually run this project. Look at the URL, localhost colon 14118, that's the port number, forward slash the name of the web form. Okay, in the task manager, you can actually look at that. So if you double click that there, ASP.NET development server. So this is the Visual Studio built-in IIS. This is fine if we are just developing applications. But then after development, if we want to make our applications available to the end users, either on the internet or on the intranet, then we have to deploy this to actual IIS. And there are two ways to do that. One, from within the Visual Studio itself, Okay, if you want to deploy this application to IIS from within Visual Studio, right click on that web application project, go to the properties, and within the properties tab, click on the web tab and look at that. By default, it is using Visual Studio Development Server. Instead of that, I want to use local IIS web server. And this is the URL using which I'm going to access my application. And look at the URL. It says HTTP colon localhost, I mean colon forward slash forward slash localhost application pools demo. That's going to be the name of the virtual directory which gets created in IIS. Okay, now does this name has to match with the name of the application? Not necessarily. You can give this virtual directory any meaningful name that you want. Okay, I'm going to give that app one. Okay, so when I click on this button, create virtual directory, that's going to create a virtual directory within IIS. But before that, let's actually get to IIS. And to get to IIS, there are two ways. One way is click on the start button, go to control panel. And within control panel, click on system and security, administrative tools, IIS manager. That's one way which gets us to IIS. And the other way is to simply click on the start button, type run and press enter within the run window, type inet manager, click OK. That should bring up IIS as well. And expand the root node within IIS, and then expand sites, and expand default website. And look at this here. At the moment, we don't see you know, an application with name app1. But the moment I click on this button, create virtual directory, it's going to create that virtual directory there. Look at the message. The virtual directory was created successfully. Click OK, get to IIS, refresh this default website and look at that we see that app one there now if i come to visual studio and press ctrl f5 look at the url oh we didn't save that so let's go ahead and change uh, save that first and then now press ctrl f5 there so now it should actually use the iis rather than the built-in visual studio development server Okay, so we are running this ASP.NET web application project using IIS. And now this application is using one of the application pools. So what are application pools? So if you look at this, I, I have application pools here. Okay, by the way, we have just seen how to create an application within IIS using Visual Studio. Can't I do that directly within Visual Studio? You can do that as well. Okay, let me delete this app one here and let's see how to create an application directly here. To do that, right click on the web, you know, default website folder, add application and look at that. You can give it an alias. I'm going to call that app one and then you can select the application pool here. We'll talk about application pools in just a bit. And then give the physical path. Now, where is this web application project present? This web application project is, pre uh, is actually present in C drive. To figure that out, right click on the project and say open folder in Windows Explorer. Look at this. This is where it is present. C colon backslash application pools demo. That's the solution folder. And this is the web application folder. So my web application is present in C colon backslash application pools demo backslash application pools demo. So within IIS, we have to specify that physical path. So click on the ellipsis button, navigate to C drive application pools demo, 
and application pools demo. Okay, and click OK. That's it. Now, if I go ahead and press Control F5, I am still able to access it there the same way. So we can either deploy our application directly from within Visual Studio or you can do it in IIS. Okay, now these applications, you can create as many applications as you want depending on how many web applications you have. You may create that many applications within IIS. Now all these applications can be present within the same application pool or you know half of them present in one application pool and half of them may be deployed to another application pool. Okay, so now let's talk about what are these application pools. So an application pool can contain one or more web applications. In IIS, it is actually possible to create one or more application pools. Now, is it possible to create my own application pools? Absolutely. And how do we do that? Just right click on the application pool, add application pool, and then give it a name, meaningful name. Now, whatever you see here are built-in application pools. Now, if I right click and say add application pool, I'm creating my own application pool. Let's call this, for example, app pool one, and select your .NET Framework version. I have .NET Framework version 4.0, so I'm gonna target that. So that app pool one is created. Currently, within this application pool, I don't have any applications. But whereas ASP.NET version 4.0 has got three applications, and you know you can see the rest of that there. Okay, so. Applications in different application pools run in its own worker process. By default, when we actually run an application, okay, it's going to run inside the ASP.NET worker process. I have Windows 7 on my machine, so the ASP.NET worker process here is w3wp.exe. And to look at the worker process, right click on your taskbar and go to the task manager. And within the task manager, click on show all processes on the processes tab, click on show process from all users, and then press W key on the keyboard. Look at that, w3wp.exe. This is the executable, which is actually executing or running my ASP.NET web application project. And look at the description there, that is IIS worker process manager. Now, if you don't have application pools, for example, let's say if we don't have application pools, all ASP.NET web applications are run using the same worker process. And then what's going to happen if that worker process dies or recycles for some reason, all the web applications get affected. Okay, but with application pools, what's going to happen? So applications in different application pools runs in, in its own worker process. Okay, so every application pool has got its own worker process. So obviously, you know, there are four now five application pools here. Each application pool has their own worker process. Now, if I deploy two applications to this pool, I can deploy the rest of two applications to this pool. And if there is something wrong with this application pool, only the applications within that pool are affected. But whereas applications within this pool are not affected. And it's also possible that you can configure security differently for different application pools. Okay, so that's the advantage. We get application, we can maintain isolation between applications. Okay, so errors in one application pool will not affect the applications running in other application pools. And also remember, each application pool has its own worker process. For example, if an application pool is recycled, only the applications in that pool are affected and they may lose state information if stored inside worker process. But applications in the other pool are, not, are unaffected. In fact, we'll look at this example practically in the next video session. Deploying applications different to different application pools enables us to achieve the degree of application isolation that we need in terms of availability and security. Okay, now, how in terms of availability, if one application pool is affected, you know, the applications only within that pool are not available, but applications from the other pool are available. And similarly, high, the applications that require to have high level of security, I will deploy them to an application pool that has high level of security configured. And whereas applications that doesn't require that high level of security, I can deploy them to another application pool. So basically, it gives you that flexibility of you know, availability and security depending on your application needs. 
for example, applications that require high security can be present in one application pool and other applications can be in a different application pool. Another example, hosting providers, internet service providers, for example, can place competing business applications in different application pools so that they do not accidentally access the data belonging to their competitor. ASP.NET applications execute inside the ASP.NET worker process called W3WP.exe. The applications are executed by the worker process using the vendor's identity. Okay. Now, if you look at this, okay, uh, the application pools. There are different application pools here, and then within this application pool, we we have several applications, and those applications are used are executed using a worker process, the IIS worker process called W3WP.exe. Now, under what identity is the worker process going to execute the code? That depends on the application pool identity. So if I right click on my application and go to advanced settings on the application pool, look at that. There is something called identity. And look at the application pool identity here. Okay, if I click the ellipsis button there, look at the built-in accounts that I have. I have local service, local system, network service, application pool identity. These are the built-in accounts that are used. Okay, you can configure at an application pool level which account you want to use. And these accounts, some of them have high security and some of them are least privileged accounts. We'll talk about these accounts in just a bit. But remember, whenever the worker process executes your application code, that's going to have an user account associated with that worker process. So which user account is it using? That depends on the application pool identity that we select here. Okay, by default, it's going to use the application pool identity. We'll talk about these security settings, you know, in the next video session in a very great detail. Okay, but remember there is something called application pool identity that can be configured on a per application pool basis. So the applications are executed by the worker process using a vendor's identity. The vendor's identity that is used is dependent on the application pool identity. The application pool identity can be any of the following built-in accounts. We have seen them, local service, local system, network service. In addition to these built-in accounts, we can also use a custom account by providing the username and password. So for example, if I take this app pool one, go to the advanced settings and I go to identity, click on the ellipsis button. These are the built-in accounts that I can use or I can use a custom account by selecting that and then specifying the username password and then you know re-enter the password to confirm. By default when a new application pool is created it uses the application pool identity and that's what we have just seen. Okay we created this new application pool here which is Apple one and look at that by default it is using application pool identity but it's possible to change the application pool identity by going to advanced settings and using this ellipsis button. And these are the different user accounts that we can use with the application pool identity in a local system. This is a local system account which is completely trusted account and this has very high privileges. And there is nothing you know that is not possible with this account. You can do anything with this account on that machine. In fact, it has you know more privileges than the, than the administrator. And it can also access the network resources. Okay? Whereas if you look at network servers, it's a restricted or limited account, which is generally used to run standard least privileged services. This account has less privileges than local system account or the administrator and this account can access network resources. It's there in the name network service. It can also access network service. But remember, this is a least privileged account usually used to run a standard least privileged services. Local service, again, this is a restricted or limited service similar to network service. The difference is local service, as the name states, it can only access local resources, not network resources. Application pool identity, whenever we create a new application pool, you know, IS creates a virtual account with the name of the new application pool and runs the application pool's worker process under this account. This is also a least privileged account. Okay, so usually when, if you remember, we created this app pool one and when we created that, it automatically creates a virtual account with name 
app pool one. In fact, to look at that, I can actually come to this web form one view code and I actually can say response dot write and then system dot security dot principal within this I can say Windows identity it has got a static method called get current and then dot name okay so let's write you know the current user account that's executing our code okay but then before that let's ensure our application is associated with that my application is app1 I want to associate that with app pool 1 how do we do that simply right click on that application within IIS manage application go to advanced settings and here select your application pool what's our application pool app pool 1 I click OK OK and now I go to application pools I have app pool 1 now what is the identity it is using application pool identity okay so let's go ahead and run that now so when I press control F5 it should print the name of the user account under which the application code is being executed look at that IIS app pool backslash app pool one that's the name of the account okay so when a new application pool is created IIS creates a virtual account with the name of the new application pool so here the name of the application pool is app pool one so IIS has actually created an account with that name app pool one and my application code is now executed you know using the account privileges that this app pool one account has got and that's a least privileged account and always keep in mind running applications using a low privileged account is a very good security practice because if there is a bug you know a malicious user cannot take the advantage of that bug to hack into your application or system and we have seen how to associate an ASP.NET web application with an application pool okay so the whole idea is that when we use application pools we have that isolation between applications depending on our application needs we can deploy them to the right application pools okay which provides us with you know custom security for different applications and custom you know probably the availability again if there is a problem with one application pool only the applications within that pool are affected applications in the other application pool remain unaffected on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day